are always done at Temple of Arts with music and um, yeah, it's, it's a blessing to have them help me out and find a place so I can rehearse with my band. So um, now tell me, I can tell from your accent, you're from America, where are you <laughs> from? Yeah, I was born and raised in Miami and I'm a nomad so I lived all over, I moved to Paris when I was a kid and moved to San Francisco, Boston, I'm just from all over, but born and raised in Miami, family's from Haiti. So yeah. what drove you to first pick up drumsticks? Um, I guess the only vivid thing that I remember is sitting on my uncle's lap or a whole bunch of people's laps and just playing drums. And my dad played. My dad played drums. My uh, my grandpa played was a DJ, but everybody played like some type of musical instrument. So I don't only only play drums. I play all the instruments because everyone around everyone around plays like all the instruments. Yeah. So, but I know because you said sometimes you're on key, keys and you've got yeah. another drummer sitting in with you. But drums is your main instrument. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's the main the main one. And what's the band with? called while you're over here? Yeah, the Ruckus Late Nights. Oh yeah, Ruckus Late Night. Now, so you started out young, and when did you turn to be a professional drummer? Yeah, musician? so I, my, what they said is I started around two years old, but my first gig, my first tour was. Actually, at five years old, a band came to my church and saw me playing, and they begged my mother for four months. And after four months, I actually ended up getting that gig. My mother made me get the gig when I turned six years old, I think, and I moved all yes. over the world. I'm all in favor of child labor. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> when, it's, when you're doing something that you love, it's not a word. Childhood was robbed, I mean, but it's pretty cool. From six to nine, I'm just traveling in Australia, and Paris, all over the world. It was a blessing. And, uh, I, you know, I just grew up fast. And, you know. Nothing yeah, wrong blessing. with that. Yeah, Ain't yeah. nothing wrong with that. So then what happened when you got to 20s and things? Where were you? What were um, you up to? Actually, before the 20s, I, 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 I stopped music. I, I was going crazy with music. And then after I graduated high school, I, I just quit. I wanted to be a pastor. I became a pastor, started preaching, and I was always in ministry. My mother was a police officer, and, a, and, in, and she was in the ministry, so I just kept doing that for a good two years, and then Berkeley, after offering me, offering me so many different scholarships, they, I've honestly denied like twice. Um, Did you go? I didn't go the first two times. I just kind of said no. Then at the third time, they offered me money. Okay. So I was like, oh, this looks really good. So then I ended up going to Berkeley uh, for a good two, few years. That's, I mean, it's yeah. always good to have kind of training as well. But yeah. a life on or the road can, can also be a fabulous way of training. Yeah, I grow fast. Yeah, I had a, I had a watch lady with me because I was six years old. So a lady was t bathing me, you know, taping my door. I could not go out. Chaperoning. You know, chaperone. Yeah. And so, a manager. <laughs> When you got to Kana, when you left Berkeley, then how did you, where, where did you gravitate Yeah, that was, Berkeley was a great, you know, my first gig was the Isley Brothers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that was like, that, that, that was Berkeley's opportunities to Stevie Wonder, to all these amazing artists. And then, my uh, mother had cancer. She was always dealing with cancer. And I just remember, like, dropping out after three years, going to take care of her, and literally, not even 24 hours in, I went to a jam session, and I met John Blackwell, RIP, who was Prince drummer, and from there, he introduced me. I went on tour with him as his bass player, mm. then he introduced me to Prince, a week later, Prince flies me out to Minnesota, mm. and I'm like, not even helping my mom, I'm over here, getting mentored by Prince, and then another school picked me up, I found out the business of schools, so another school picked me up, and uh, I started going to school in Minnesota, taking lessons with Prince and being his mentee. 
And I lived with Prince for like two weeks. Until Lucky I got an apartment. You, I wouldn't have minded two weeks. No, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> and then um, just from there, you know, my mother passed away while I lived there. And then I've just kind of just been on this journey of performing and playing my own music and playing more piano, singing, rapping, writing. Writing. You know. Musicians' pension. Yeah, yeah. Right, I love that. right, right. Exactly. So you kept doing gigs, and then how long ago before you came to England? I mean, yeah. how, what brought you here? What was, wind blew you this way? I was a teacher in uh, California, and I got a gig to play July in um, Love Supreme Jazz Fest. Okay. And so I decided to come in May and just network. Was that last month, year? Last year. Yeah, okay. I came two months early to network for a month, and I literally found tons of gigs for that first month. Then I went on a month vacation, and I told everybody I'll be back in July. And I didn't think I was gonna stay after, you know, my flight was July 2nd, and then I played uh, Love Supreme Jazz Fest, and then I'm, I've been here ever since. There's a couple of little funny stories. People were telling me, you gotta stick around for Carnival. You gotta see that butt, that ass. In America, we say that ass, but you know, over here, I heard that there's people be dancing, it's gonna be a, ba a great time. Then I end up getting a gig at Carnival. That's then cool. I stuck around, ch changed my flight the second time, then Jazz Fest came, and I ended up getting a gig for Jazz Fest, then I just canceled my flight, got my money back. And I, ever since November, I made that decision. It took me from July to November to make that decision. So you're gonna be around, sticking around for a while? I am a mate, mate. Oh, Johnny, you love <laughs> the English lingo. I'm alerted, I'm alerted, but I like it. I like well, my... I'm actually hoping to come so very soon and hear the band in action. Okay, yeah. But I wanted to thank you for talking to Globetrotters. You were awesome at interviewing, well, that was well, nice. What I would really like, you can tell me to get lost, but I'd really just like a bit of a, oh, a man. groove, a drum. To, can you do that to sort of. All right. You better hold the microphone. I'll put it down here. Yeah. Just, you know, there's nothing like drums to work your way into a woman's heart. Uh. Go for it, Ruckus. Just, right. just thrill the hell out of Now that you say a woman's heart, like, I feel like I... 